happy Father's Day to all you dads. Uh, if your father is still alive today, I hope you've had a chance to, to maybe give him a call or maybe go out to eat with him. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe you're not a father. Or maybe uh, you don't have a child, but maybe you could be a mentor to somebody this week or maybe even this month. So uh, I know many, many of you today, uh, it's a difficult day. Maybe a, a father wasn't in your life. Maybe he wasn't a, a somebody that you could look up to. And, uh, and so uh, I'm going to look into the scripture today in, in the Luke chapter 15. It's, it's probably one of the most familiar parts, uh, talking about the parable of the lost son. I, when they asked me if I would mind speaking on the Sunday school today, and I said, uh, sure, and then, and I don't know if I've ever done one or even heard of one that with a, uh, about Father's Day uh, being the parable of the lost son. So, uh, and again, like I said earlier, this may have not have been a great day for you, uh, Father's Day. And I know like in my own life, uh, and I'll share my own personal experience. My, uh, my real father, uh, uh, my mother had, had three, uh, three children by him. Uh, and for years and years, I never could even think about my real father, my uh, my brother and my sister. Uh, they never would say anything to me. That they was several, a couple years older than I was. My mother would never say anything. So my mother died when in 1994, and uh, and probably several years after that, I asked my uncle. I said, you know, what really happened with my father and mother? And uh, so. My father was nothing but a drunkard. He had several wives. I know for a fact he had six children, three by my mother and three by another lady. But when I was two years old, uh, my mother, uh, the state wanted to put me and my sister in a, uh, in a facility, whether it be a, a, a foster home. But my mother was determined she was going to raise me and my sister. My older brother went to live with my grandparents uh, and so my mother went to Orlando and uh, was down there and, and met my stepfather. Uh, we, we was living in North Georgia at the time. Uh, my mother was living on Lookout Mountain. She moved to Orlando and met my stepfather. And there, uh, I, he was my real, what I call my real dad. My mother uh, came back to North Georgia, moved to several uh, we moved several places to Indiana, to Hickson, and, and back to North Georgia. My real father, he he lived, uh, he probably lived as a crow flies, maybe two miles. He never called me, he never was part of my life, he never, he never did even come to my graduation or any awards that I received. And so, you know, it was it was a struggle this Father's Day, Father's Day for me in so many ways. I, I think back and I thought, wow, you know, and I know many, many children today are in the same situation, just like I was. Uh, when somebody would bring it up, I would just, I would just look over. I knew what my last name was. I was a, my last name was Hood, and I had several cousins that knew who I was. They, they knew my real father. But so in 19, uh, probably in 19, uh, I guess 96, I asked my uncle, and he said, Terry, he just never was apart so you know for years I mean it, it was a void it was a hurt in my life and I just never understood and I think today we see a lot of the problems we have uh, in our children today where the father is not in the lives of the children and so we uh, uh, so you know if if you're in that same situation I don't know why even I shared it but I I feel like there's people out there that's in the same place where I was Maybe your mother's not involved, was never involved in your life. I know several people that your mother wasn't in their life. But I'll look and I'll tell, the, uh, as Paul Harvey said in, uh, you know, uh, in the, in the uh, what he said, he said, you know, he'll come back and say, uh, and he'll say, you know, the rest of the story. So I'll tell you the rest of the story after I get done with, with the teaching. So let's look at in the chapter, uh, the 15th chapter of Luke today and, beginning at verse, uh, at verse number 11, and it says uh, that, uh, that Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons, the, the younger one who said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate. So he divided the, the property between them. In, in Deuteronomy, it tells us that 
that the older son was asked you to get two-thirds of a share and the younger son was to get one-third of the share. But, and it's just like today, this younger son with such an arrogant attitude, he wanted his stuff right now, and right, right at this time. But we see your father, we see that he was a giving father. He divided his property up between the two, between the two boys. Uh, we see uh, where he says, he said he divided, he said, said to him that, he said, I'll give you your share of the state. You know, I imagine it would have been a pretty hard situation, you know, if, and I don't know how old this uh, man was or the children, but, you know, he had to give part of his estate up. A lot of times when you give your estate up, it's later on in your life. But, so, but he was, he was a giving father. He, he divided the property up. I see in, in, he said that not long after that, the young son together, all he had, set off for a distant country. So we see we not only was, a, was he a giving father, he was a, he was a loving father. He gave the property away. He gave his property away between the two sons. Uh, I see here it says uh, that he was a hurting father. It said that this boy here, he left and he set off for a distant country. And you can just imagine here you've got a son and he takes what his father's earned, what he's, what he's, uh, what he's built up to, and now his son's taken over. So I imagine this father, he was a hurting father here at this time. Uh, so the son left, and he, he said that he, that he squandered all his wealth here. Uh, he said, and set off for a country and squandered his wealth in wild living. After he spent everything, there was a severe family in the whole country, and he began in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country. He went out to the fields to feed the pigs. So we see not only a, we see not only was that we have a, a giving father, a loving father, a hurting father, and the, the scriptures doesn't say, but I feel like he was a he was a praying father too. Uh, he was a. I imagine he was each day when when he was out working, he would come. He was hoping his son would come home. And maybe as in a distance, he would look out and say, man, I hope the day's the day. And, uh, and so he said, uh, he said, yeah, he said, uh, he said, you know, Father, just, uh, you know, and I imagine he prayed for this son daily. And, uh, not only was he a, a, a praying father, it says that he longed to fill this son. He said he longed to fill his stomach with pods that the pigs were eating. But no one gave him anything. So this son had, had, had squandered everything that his father had given him. Uh, verse 17, it says, When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. So not only uh, was he a, a giving father, a loving father, uh, a hurting father, a praying father. We see here in verse uh, uh, 20, so when he got up and went to his father, he says, but while he was still a long way off, his father could see him as filled with compassion. So I imagine that father, like I said earlier, he was probably just kind of looking over the horizon. Maybe, maybe this is the day. Maybe this is the day that my son will come home. So we've got a joyous father here. He, he, he said that his son, he finally decided to come home. Uh, and his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son and threw his arms around him. So uh, we see uh, not only a joyous father here, but we see a compassion. Uh, he could have come, the father could have come and said, you know, you know, what are you doing here? What are you doing back? Uh, you know, you've got your share of your inheritance. You know, what, what are you doing back? But what, what did he do? It says he, uh, he, he was filled with compassion. He ran and he threw his arms around him and he kissed him. He said, uh, he said the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. And against you, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. See what the, let's look here in verse 22 to see what, see what, the, uh, what the father did. So he said he, he, he put his arms around him, he kissed him. So we see not only he was a compassionate father, 
but he was an honorable father. But the father said to servants, quick. I mean, he's, he didn't just say, okay, servants, you know, let's kind of get this together, you know, the next week or maybe the next month. He said, quickly, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. So uh, bring, the, bring the fatty calf. So, you know, we're, we're, let's eat. Let's, we're, we're, we're fixing to have a party here. So he, he, was, a, he was an honorable father uh, to, a, you know, to a son that just deserted the whole family. Uh, we see here uh, he bring the fatty calf and kill. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead, is live again. He was lost and is found. But they began to celebrate. So we, so we see uh, here he's an honorable father. We see he was, a, he was a celebrating father. My son was dead, but now is alive. And, uh, but you know, as I was, as I was looking on, on the scripture, doesn't our Heavenly Father do the same way for us? You know, I can think back in my own life. I, I lived many years without Christ. Uh, uh, I was saved at a young age. My, when we moved back to North Georgia, my stepfather and my mother, I always lived close to a church. I was always a, a close to a church. I went to church. But during my, if your parents aren't involved bringing you up in church, it's hard for an eight-year-old boy to, to walk to church or, you know, if he didn't have any kind of a uh, encouragement from his family. But, you know, I, I lived outside of Christ for a number of years. And I, and I could just picture myself as a, this same thing as this young man. But, but Christ... He has his arms outstretched, just like this father did. He's, he said, please, please come back. Please uh, come back. Turn your life back over to, to me. And so I, I look in, the, in, in my own life and see how, how God, over the years, and you know, I, under, I don't understand why things happened the way they did, but, but you know, I know that God loves each and every one of us. That Jesus wants to be a part of your life, young man, young lady. Maybe you're not, Father, maybe you're not living the, the life that God wants you to live. Maybe you need to go back and make some adjustments with your children. You know, as I was saying earlier about uh, the rest of the story, and I, I share this, and again, as I said earlier, I never did see my real father. I never did know what he looked like. Uh, I'd heard about him. But, but one day, uh, I work in the own cemetery, so one day I had a lady call me on the phone. And I don't know why she called me. And most of the time, I let somebody else answer the phone. But this day, I picked the phone up. And she was, uh, she was asking me, and she lived in North Georgia, and she said, Sir, I've, I've got these remains of a body, and, you know, I don't know what to do with them. And she, I said, when I asked her, I said, Well, where's her, where's her uh, husband? Is he buried around here? Or is, he, is he still alive and here living around the area? And she said, uh, she said, Well, he's buried too. He's buried over at Chattanooga Memorial Park. And for whatever reason, she calls me at, at Tennessee, Georgia, Memorial Park. I don't know why she didn't call Chattanooga, but she called me. And I said, uh, she said, yeah, they used to own a beer joint up on Rossville Boulevard. And they had a beer joint on Dodge Avenue. And as I, and as it, and as I started to think, it just the light came on. She said, yeah, they lived around here for a number of years. And I said, what was this lady's name, by the way, man? She said, her name was Polly Hood. And I said, huh, I said, you probably never even believed this. This was my stepmother. Was her husband named Junior? She said, yeah. She said, why was that? I said, I was, a, I was the last child of, of Junior. She said, do what? She said, what was your name? Yeah, man, so I said, this probably been about, this was my mother had done been dead. This has probably been about 20 years ago now. So it's probably... I guess around 2099, something like that, 1999. So she said, oh, I'm so sorry. And I said, she, I said that's okay. I was, I was pretty much over. I wasn't over the hurt, but I was pretty much where I could talk about it. Then she said, she apologized so much for, you know, for bringing it up. And I said, she said, well, I've got some pictures of him in a casket or some pictures of him. And he's a bird hunter. I said, she said, would you? Would you like to have them? I said, well, I, I, you know, I would like to see what they look like for, for my children. And he's, he was probably about a guy about my size. He's probably about 6'2", probably then. He was probably about 250 pounds, I guess. And so, so you know, and she, and she sent them to me. But, but, you, but 
I mean, the chances on this happening, what she called me and me to answer the phone, her call the wrong cemetery, just, you know, just, it just, it was a blessing to me in a lot of ways. So I've, I've kept the pictures over the years, but, uh, but, you know, I've just always wondered, but, so, uh, again, I, and I'll just share a couple of scriptures here. I'm going to share just in, in Ephesians, it says, uh, Ephesians 6, 4 tells us, it says, fathers, do not aspirate your children, do not, Irritate them. Instead, bringing them, bring them up in training and instruction of the Lord. Uh, Proverbs tells us in Proverbs 1 8, it says, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Proverbs 23 24 tells us, it says, The father of the righteous child has great joy. A man of fathers, a wise son rejoices on him. And last of all, in Psalms 103, 13. 103 verse 13. It says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. So today, folks, if I, you know, uh, you know, if you're struggling in areas, you know, as a, being a father or being a, a child or your father's not uh, in your life, you know, I, I, I pray for you that you would just, uh, you, you would learn, listen to what God says because fa our father, he can be a father in our lives if we would turn our lives over to him. So thank you today for just uh, listening and, and being so uh, 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 compassionate. I pray, God, that you'll, be with us today. I pray, Father, for the ones that are, are struggling just as I was for many, many years, Lord. I pray, God, today that you would just uh, be with us as we celebrate this Father's Day. Father, for what you've done in your life. Father, you gave your only son that we could have eternal life, to spend eternity with you. I pray, God, today that you would just uh, bless uh, the homes and the, and the, and the families and the children throughout our world. Father, such a, a, a rough time we're, we're living in, but God, I know you're in full control. Father, you know what's best for each of us, and Lord, I pray that you would just, uh, we could just turn our, our trust and our lives over to you. I ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank y'all.